Namaste. So welcome to our new series about Patanjali Yoga Sutras. So we're going to start right in the beginning. Let me tell you how this series came to be. In the previous series about the yoga of death, I did a little research because of course I had heard of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras but I had never read them. And I knew the eight stages of yoga, yama, niyama, so forth, but I had got them from other sources and especially from commentaries. I wanted to see how they're discussed in the actual source material of yoga. So I was expecting, you know, that he's gonna talk about different asanas and sitting postures and this and that, you know, the way most yoga types do. Well, I was pleasantly surprised to find that the Patanjali Yoga Sutras are a work of Advaita. This is very pleasantly surprising. He starts right off in the first book, Pratama Samadhi Padaha. The first part is about Samadhi. Huh? He doesn't even start at the beginning. He starts at the top. My kind of guy. So I looked deeper into it and I was amazed. Huh? The kind of talk that you hear from most yogis has nothing, I mean zero, to do with the actual source of the teaching of yoga. You go to any yoga teacher and you say, well, what's the source of this teaching? Oh, Patanjali. Yeah, right. So here's a way you can trap the ones who've actually read him. Ask them, how many asanas does Patanjali describe in his yoga sutras? What's the answer? Zero. None. In fact, the word asana appears only twice in this whole work of four big chapters, huh? hundreds of shlokas. And he doesn't even specify which asana. He just says you have to have a comfortable sitting position. That's it. Because yoga is not about exercises and strengthening the body and all that. That only increases the ego. Real yoga is about meditation and attaining samadhi, which means loosening the ties of the ego, loosening the identification with the body, completely the opposite of the way most yoga teachers teach yoga. This always blows my mind, you know. I, <laughs> I've found this out, I mean, actually so many times. I think the biggest one was in the study of Buddha's teaching. In Buddha's teaching, he's talking about emptiness, consciousness. Actually, he's talking about Brahman using his own style of negative language. Well, we discussed all that way, way back in the Buddha series. But if you look at Buddhism today, it's nothing but rituals. Huh? They, they actually, they managed to break every single one of Buddha's principles. For example, he says, when somebody wants to really know what is the truth, what is uh, samadhi or what is nirvana, he says, go alone to a secluded place and meditate and do the work, do what has to be done. Now, what do you see in Buddhism today? Groups, groups and groups and groups and groups. Even when they meditate, they do it in a group. Buddha never, ever, I've read all the suttas of Buddha. He never says meditate in a group. 
Nowhere does he say that. So this is what happens, you see, when an ancient tradition comes in contact with Western commercial culture. It perverts it, it dilutes it. It actually turns it into its own opposite. Because these teachings were not meant for material profit. They were meant for spiritual emancipation. So if you pervert them, if you twist them and make them into something that they're not, well, the burden, a heavy burden, lies with you. Anyway, so the first part is about samadhi. And the first thing he does, he defines what is yoga. So what is yoga according to Patanjali, huh? the original yoga teacher? <laughs> Atta yoga anushasanam. Now yoga is explained. Now there are some rascals who will say, well look, the word asana is right there in the first sutra. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's anushasanam. Anushasanam. Look it up in the Sanskrit dictionary. Confirmed. <laughs> anushasanam means instruction. So now, atta, this has a specific meaning. In the sutras, for example, Vedanta Sutra begins with the word atato, which means now itself, atta iti. And what does that mean? It means now that you have gone through all these other teachings, and now that you have performed works of devotion, and pious sacrifices and religious uh, duties up to the point of developing love of God. And now that you know that God is actually within you and is accessible by deep meditation, now uh, in the Vivartavada, because you've already finished your work in the uh, Dvaita Vada and Vishishta Dvaita Vada. Now in the Vivarta Vada, I'm going to teach you about yoga. So the qualification is there, Atta. Not just any old time, but in this time, this particular time when you have got the qualifications. That's the meaning of Atta. So now let's look at the second sutra. Yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. Yoga is restraining the consciousness, chitta, from taking various forms, vritti. Now, this is a very interesting sutra. First of all, he doesn't talk about the chitta, the conditioned consciousness. He talks about the chitta unconditioned consciousness, pure consciousness. And he says that yoga means restraining this pure consciousness from any kind of modifications, vritti. Vritti means, and we've discussed this in great detail in the next to the previous series on Drigdrishya Vivekaha, Vritti means the limiting adjuncts, the upadis, and the vasanas, or the mental habits left over from previous lives and experiences. Did you ever hear a, a good song, you know, a catchy song on the radio or whatever, and then the whole day you go around singing it to yourself, hearing it in your mind? This is a vasana. So when the mind becomes very profoundly influenced by certain impressions, it will keep replaying those. Huh? And this is a vasana. So this accounts for the tendency of the mind to go out in search of various experiences, to try to attain certain impressions. 
and to satisfy various desires. But of course, this only leads to suffering. <laughs> and the limiting adjuncts, the upadi, they limit, they constrict the original consciousness, the pure consciousness, into thinking, I am an individual, I am this body, I am this mind, and so forth. So the purpose of yoga, the actual definition of yoga, is to stop that. Now, I could do a whole video, and I actually I have done, <laughs> on the word vritti. Vritti means a modification of the mind. Actually, a modification of the consciousness, chitta. So when the consciousness is modified, it's under stress. It has become something other than what it naturally is. And specifically, it has become directed outwards through the mind and senses. And in this way, it has become subject to all kinds of suffering, conditioning, limitations, pushings of habits, and so on. So in other words, the whole idea is to restrain the pure consciousness and keep it from becoming impure. Vritti means a whirlpool. Actually, the, the, the proper word is vivritti. Vivritti, or whirlpools, was discussed very deeply by the Buddha. This means a vortex. Vivekananda translates it as a whirlpool or a vortex. Now, compare this sutta. Yoga is restraining the consciousness from taking various forms. The Buddha said, etang santang etang panitam yadidam subhasankara samato subupadi pati nisago tanhakayo virago nirodo nibbana. This is peaceful. This is excellent, namely the stilling of all mental modifications, sankara, the relinquishment of all limiting adjuncts, upadi, the destruction of craving, tanha, detachment, cessation, nirvana. He's talking about the exact same thing. So this is yoga. This is samadhi. After all, the first section of the Yoga Sutras is titled about samadhi. So he's describing, beginning with the very first sutta, the actual state of samadhi, where the pure consciousness is restrained from the modifications. And in our previous series, Drig Drishya Viveka, we discussed these modifications in detail. So this is not about twisting your body into a pretzel or doing all kinds of, you know, extreme exercises. This is not about that at all. That is the opposite of what he's talking about. Because it increases the attachment to the mind and the body. It increases the conditioning of the consciousness by the vrittis. So try to understand what's being sold as yoga today is in fact the opposite of yoga and leads to the opposite result. So don't be fooled, don't be cheated. Look to the original source and think for yourself and understand the real path to liberation. Aum Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.